Hello and welcome to um, J uh, World of Ed's lesson on NG profile diagrams. So the first thing you need to know is that for us to have a pitramic way, that's my own word, a pitramic way of showing the energy change within a system, we draw an enthalpy profile diagram and it looks a bit like this. But this is really empty and usually in the exams they might want you to actually um sorry they might want you to actually draw the uh to draw this diagram out so what we've got to label first is the axes and what always goes here is the energy in the system or we can just write energy but you need to remember that the energy the system is where the bonds are at Okay, it's literally all the react all the reagents just wrapped together in cling film. Okay, it's a place where you can't put the thermometer in. This system is exclusive to just the react the reagents and the reactants and the products which are formed. So we've got this reagents over here. You can call them reactants. I'm so used. I'm. I'm getting them mixed up, but you can reagents and reactants are the same in this case. So we know that let's let's have a look at this over here. We've got H2 plus O2 to make H2O. As you can see, they are not balanced because these are in diatomic states as well. They always come in diatomic states. You can never just find a H plus by itself. Unless it's H plus, but still no, no. So there's one oxygen here and there's two oxygens here. So what do you do? You place the two here to balance that out. But then we've got two mole we've got two hydrogen atoms over here, four over here, and we've got two over here. So what do we do? We put a two there as well. So we balanced it out and we can see that the overall energy in the system now is negative 483.6. And that means that this line the products line is going to be lower than the reagents line because the net energy in that system is negative. The overall energy in that system is now negative. And we depict that by doing a little arrow, not double headed. Please do not draw double headed arrows. You never have double headed arrows in an enthalpy profile diagram unless for special circumstances which we're going to discuss in a minute. I'll give it five minutes. So what we do here, this tells us the delta um, the, the delta change, the the overall change in energy. And we would write delta H to uh, well to tell us that that is the overall energy, that is the amount of energy which has been lost in the system to the surroundings. So, as you may, as you may or may not know, a lot, well, every single molecule needs an activation energy to actually be able to break the bonds for the reagents. This is because that if, this is because if it didn't have an activation energy, we wouldn't have anything because everything would just be blown up in our faces. I don't think the earth would even exist. It would just be blown up all the time. Every time it formed, blow up, blow up, blow up. Yeah, it's not really good. So we've got an activation energy and it's a hurdle that these, um, these molecules have to overcome. So when they collide at each other, they need to be colliding at a specific or even higher energy to actually form a reaction, to actually perform a reaction, okay? Like a little um, analogy that I usually say is that when you usually just bump into, bump into someone, just clipping them, they don't really mind. But when you run at them without them knowing and they bump into them, they're going to start, they, they might just want to fight with you. So imagine you're running, 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 and you bump into them at the minimum or even greater energy required to start this reaction because that's what the end that's what activation energy is activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to perform a reaction in your exam you need to write minimum okay because if you don't write minimum you're suggesting that it needs to be at a specific um energy okay let's, let's just say that this 
um, this has the activation energy is, energy is at plus 450. If you say activation energy is the energy needed to perform a reaction, you're just basically saying that it needs to be at 450. If it's 451, it won't work. That's what you're basically saying. So it needs to be the minimum energy required. So it jumps over that hurdle and it breaks the bonds. Okay, these bonds have been broken. And to form it, when it's formed, energy is released when it's formed. So it's released into the surroundings. So as you can imagine, if you've got money, if you've got 1,000, if you've got 450 pounds here and you're just shredding it away, you're just chopping it away, you're throwing it away, you're giving it out to anyone. The, your amount of money is going to go down. It's going to go down, 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 down. And then you get to a point, you get to a point where um, you might even need to be paying some debt to your bank society. So it even goes down all the way down to the products. Again, sorry, that's my fault. It, this product line should have been closer. Uh, there we go. And that is what our profile diagram looks like for exothermic reactions. And all we need now is a little arrow to tell us that this is activation energy. And the notation that we use is E subscript A. Okay, and that just tells us is the activation energy, the activate the energy needed to activate this reaction. Okay, if you want to go all CIA on it. And this is delta H, this is the change in the energy from the beginning to the end okay in, this doesn't really say that this has got zero energy in the system and this has got minus 483.6 kilojoules in the system but it's telling us that if we started with 10,000 pounds and we ended up with 1,000 pounds we have had a change well okay a delta change of money of, of like 900 pounds or minus 900 pounds Okay, so that, that's just basically telling us that needs to start from the reagents and that needs to finish at the products. It cannot be double-headed. Okay, so you cannot draw it like this. Because you're basically inferring that this is this is back this is backward compatible. You can you can go from the products back to the re, to the reagents. And in a profile diagram, we don't want to write that. We don't want to suggest that. So for um for a catalyst, you need to know that a catalyst lowers the minimum energy required to perform a reaction. And it does it quite well without being used up. Don't forget the without being used up. That is very important. And it does it quite nicely as well because it doesn't get used up or anything. And to draw that, to actually, um, to actually depict it on an exothermic profile diagram, we will draw the progress being like this, okay? You can see the peak is much lower than this, and this is telling us that the energy required for this reaction is now lower. And at this point, you can actually either, I would suggest drawing a different arrow. You can draw an arrow to the, to the top, yeah, not, not to where I just drew it now, but to the top, and a right, E C, and that means the activation energy of a catalyst, and it cannot be a double-headed arrow. I think. Mm, would you get away with draw, drawing an arrow like that? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk that mark like that. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And that is what the energy of the. Um, that's the activation energy of a catalyst. That's how we show it on. Um, on an energy profile diagram. So for an endothermic reaction, it's exactly the same, but we've just got a different, uh, we've just got a different outset to it. Since there are, there is more energy in the system, the product line is going to be higher than the reagents line, okay? Because there is more energy in the system. Since there's more energy, it's higher. Less energy is lower. So we've got the, we've got the reagents here. We've got the products here. Next thing we need to do is to balance this out because this says H2 plus I2 makes high. We need to put a 2 here to make 2 hydrogens and 2 iodines. Now, this bit, see, um, this bit can get a bit confusing. 
especially if the product line was all the way up here. You'd be thinking, wait, hold on. So does the does the activation energy energy go like that? No, it doesn't. It's exactly the same. It's just because the product line is just a bit higher. It doesn't mean that the pathway in which it takes is any dif different. So we've got the energy required, the minimum energy required to start the reaction, which is activation energy, and then the energy given off um, as it's forming these products into the surroundings. Then we have the products over here. Okay, remember, energy is being taken in from the surroundings over here and given out to the surroundings over here. But in the surroundings, it will be colder because there will be less energy in the surroundings, but more energy in the system. And what we do here, we need to draw um, activation energy. Okay, EA. And we need to draw the delta H. Now the delta H will go upwards because it always goes from the reagents to the products. And we always write delta H. You can write you can write that if you want, positive. You can write that if you want. If they ask you, you should write down what that is. Because what you most likely would need to do is to calculate how much energy is needed to um how what the enthalpy change is. But that is going to be in my next video. So thank you very much for listening to this. Again, sorry, with a catalyst, before I forget, the catalyst, it lowers the, um, the activation energy without being used, so it would look like this. Okay, and that's EAC. One more thing before I go, before I forget, if we've got another reagent, um, we've got another product, say um, it makes 4HI, and the Delta um, and the delta H is positive 1056. This is complete and utter like rubbish, but I'm just saying. And the product line is all the way over here. This is basically, I'm basically telling you to actually make sure that this number is relative to everything else. Huh? Huh? So I'm saying that since this. Since this is only positive 53 kilojoules per mole, this product is only a tiny little bit above reagents. But if it's 1056 kilojoules per mole, I'll make sure it's way at the top. I'll make sure it's like over here, okay, at the top of the arrow. Or even, yeah, just make, just make sure it's relative. And that is it. Yeah, that is most definitely it. It's the same for, um, same for exothermic, but... That is it. Thank you very much.